In this Tech Corner video, we are looking at flash duration, what it is, how it affects your images, and how to select a perfect flash for frozen action. Flash duration is equivalent to your shutter speed. The faster your shutter speed, the more you will freeze movement with ambient light. The same is true for your flash. The shorter the flash duration, the shorter the exposure, again freezing action, provided ambient light is not affecting your shot. Most tutorials about freezing action will talk about reducing flash power to shorten flash duration. But not all flash are made equal and your results will vary greatly depending on the flash you choose. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video where I will show you a great and inexpensive flash accessory to help you freeze movement on your next project. So the way a flash works in general is the globe lights up very quickly and then fades off relatively slowly, as shown in this graph, with the entire process lasting a fraction of a second. The industry standard for flash duration is typically measured as T0.5 or T0.1. The T0.5 is the time the flash bulb is lit above 50% brightness of the preset power level, and this is what most flash manufacturers will quote as their flash duration, mainly for marketing reasons. The issue with T0.5 is that there is a significant amount of light at the tail end still illuminating the scene, making it much harder to freeze action. T0.1 is the time the flash bulb is lit above 10% brightness at the given power level, and as you can see in this graph, it is significantly longer. In fact, T0.1 is typically 2-3 to three times longer than T0.5. For a true representation of flash duration in order to freeze movement, T0.5 values need to be used. Flash duration is irrelevant with portrait and still life photography, since even the slowest flash duration will still be faster than your camera's sync speed. When you start doing action or dance shots, water splash and high speed action, flash duration will be the difference between getting the perfect shot and getting a blurry mess. As I mentioned at the start of this video, not all flash are created equal, and there are two distinct flash technologies on the market, conventional flash and IGBT. Conventional flash works by reducing the power to the flash tube when you turn the power down on your flash. Lower power means less energy, which in turn means less light. This is how most older studio strobes work, because it is much easier and cheaper to control high current this way, although more and more manufacturers are changing to IGBT in the studio strobes as technology gets cheaper. But more on that shortly. The issue with conventional flash is that flash duration is typically quite long. To make matters worse, as you decrease power, the burn time gets longer, increasing flash duration, not decreasing it, as many tutorials will have you believe. Looking again at our graph of the BRX500, you can see how as the power is reduced, the flash duration increases, especially at T0.1. As a side note, a longer burn time can affect your white balance, but that's a topic for another video. So when comparing other studio lights from that generation, including the Broncolor A2R and the D-Light 4IT, a similar pattern can be seen. Again, for standard portraits, product, still life, or photographing anything that's not moving extremely fast, these lights are amazing, and I'll use all of them. But if you are trying to get sharp splash shots, for example, the flash duration in these lights will be far too long to freeze movement. So how do we get these perfectly frozen action shots? Enter IGBT. Most speed lights on the market have used IGBT technology for a long time now due to the low power output when compared to studio strobes. As technology has become more affordable, IGBT is now being used in studio strobes as well. The way IGBT works is that the flash always fires at full power and clever circuitry is used to cut the flash output at the right time, as you can see in the graph of the Godox AD600. You will also notice in this graph that as we decrease power, in this case in tenths of a stop, there is a point where the brightness does start to fall. This is because the globe takes longer to reach full brightness than the flash duration at that setting, so the lower light output is compensated with precise timing of when the globe is shut off. Unlike your camera's shutter that tops out at 1 4,000th or 1 8,000th of a second, flash duration in modern strobes exceed that. Keep in mind, however, that if you wanted to shoot with a shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second or faster in a studio, 
you will need crazy bright constant lights to make your exposure work, not to mention the insane power requirements for those lights. Using flash eliminates that issue since all flash are extremely bright for a fraction of a second and many these days are battery powered, hence the reason we use flash for this style of photography. So does this mean you need to sell a kidney to get a fancy studio strobe? Far from it. All modern speed lights use IGBT technology and are extremely cost effective. The downside of a speed light is its low power output, especially when you turn it down to shorten the flash duration. To compensate for that, brackets exist where you can mount multiple speed lights on the one stand and even attach an umbrella to it. Each speed light will still give you a short flash duration, but the combined power output of multiple speed lights will help with exposure. If you are on a budget or already own two or three speed lights, these brackets are invaluable and you should have at least one in your gear bag. If you're interested in getting one of these brackets, I will leave a link in the description below where you can purchase one for yourself. So next time you're trying to freeze someone jumping or perfectly freeze every droplet in the photo and you keep getting motion blur, consider if the light and power setting you are using are suitable for that shot. I can't stress enough however that to freeze action it is a T0.1 value that you should be looking at. As an example, the Profoto D2 is marketed as the world's fastest monolight with 1 63,000th of a second flash duration. However, if you look at the full spec, that's a T0.5 value. At T0.1, the flash duration dropped to 13,500th of a second. Still a very impressive number, but way off the T0.5 value. As always, thanks for watching. If you have found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe and press the bell notification icon so you get an alert when new videos come out.